Well, winter's back. It's um, 54 degrees. Rain starting. Another great weekend to work on aircraft. Hey guys, how's it going? Looks like uh, we got a bunch of stuff going on in the hangar. Uh, we've got exhaust work we're trying to get done. We're still hooking up engine stuff. Oil system is coming along. Propeller governors, all sorts of little things coming along. So, uh, and I've got some parts in the car for some of the stuff. Some of the other stuff we we're going to have to get to next week. But it's um, it's coming along. It's uh, it's lots 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 of little things getting hooked up. Uh, we also have some. Uh, sheet metal work we're going to try to get the rear floors in um, hopefully that's all ready to go I got some stuff to clean up some of the nut plates so anyway stand by let's see what's going on the hangar okay caught uh, Jim and Richard working on the aircraft which is a good thing <laughs> <laughs> okay man what are you doing up there uh, we're trying to hook up the CHT uh sensor line uh, yeah. into the uh, panel so we can pipe it into the And we've got the, pr the problem we've got is the end fittings on that. Those really high speed air f end fittings. Can you see those? Yeah, they're kind of kind of fancy looking. So so we found a brand new brand new old stock for one. For one. And I think the other engine is the lead is shot on that, I think, isn't it? On yeah, da on Dallas's CST, engine. I thought we could put a lead on. Well, it. on the, we the long the long Oh, one. the long this one, yes. Yeah. So we got to find something on that. Okay, cool. And then you got the you got the rest of the heat muff. Heat muff is done. Yes. All the heat muff is done. So you guys work on scat tube. Scat tube. And then Dallas is getting the scat tube for the bottom. So hopefully we can get the stuff down to carburetors here pretty soon. Okay, doke. And then we got the baffles on last week. Yep. So the, all the baffles are on except for the one on. No, we got the ones in the we bottom done too. Um, oh, we need. To, there's a. I got a blue tape here. We got to see what's going on there. If that's uh, a clamp that's loose or something. That or it needs to be a uh, safety wire. No, this is on, on the, the goofy thing. On the, anyway, when it you get done. It has that weird end. When you get done all with everything, just okay. take a looky loo on that. Okay. See if there's anything wrong. Okay. Cool beans. These guys are keeping me honest. Jim, what are you doing here, bud? <laughs> Jim's, uh, Jim's in charge of keeping Richard in line. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, keeping right. him with parts. Yeah, and well, I got to talk to Jim about that. <laughs> See, Joey is appears to be drilling out some screws or rivets, and uh, I'm kind of curious. Joey, what are we doing over here? I thought we we're trying to put this thing together, not take it apart. Yeah, then we did some cleanup work, going to put new floors in. Uh huh. And we saw one of the flanges here. Uh, and we took off a trim piece. Uh, not in that great shape, but particularly that eruption corrosion there. Um, a little schmutz that shouldn't be there. So that for sure. Yeah, there's a noticeable dip there. For sure needs repair. Um, then further investigation took this off, and then we see yeah, all these rivets that were uh, back here, right? Yeah, back there. That really is not yeah. the spec at all. I don't think a single one of them really is. Okay. <laughs> so that's what we're drilling out right now. It's like child's play. <laughs> yeah. So. so all right. Somebody was unsupervised that, and unqualified. All right. So basically what we're doing is we're going back over and fixing these rivets so we're, it's actually going to hold properly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. And fabricate some new pieces here. And Yay. Salt. More sheet metal work. Yeah. So. I love it. Yep. All right. Well, let me get out of your way and continue working. All right. So now we're uh, hanging out in the uh, left-hand engine area. So I'm gonna see if I got the names right. You're a younger guy, so it's Sebastian, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, Sebastian, what are you doing in there? 
I'm trying to get up, get rid of two lines that are in here that are like old, probably been here since like the 50s, I think. Okay. And we're gonna replace them with new, better lines. What kind of lines are they? They're uh, they're pipe fitting lines. Pipe fitting lines. Okay. So you're just using, just trying to get in there, take them out, and yep. put better, uh, more quality parts in there. All right. Yeah. Well, let me get out of your way. Still over here on the left hand side. We got Ashlyn and Dallas working over here. Um, I asked Dallas if it's okay if I start chatting with him. He said, give, so give me a minute while he uh, set it with the flashlight in his mouth. So I figure I get some B roll footage there while they're working. Dallas, aside from cursing muttering oil filter or oil, what would you say? Oil what? This is the oil cooler. So. Oil cooler, excuse me. Yep. Cursing the oil cooler. What are we doing with the oil cooler? So we're mounting it for final installation. We put bolts and nuts in it already. However, the washers weren't fat enough, so they rotate. The shanks are uh, too long. So, uh, uh, yeah, if you push it. So, it's kind of washed out up there, but these bolts here you need to have a feeler gauge between the wall because you can't get a socket on them. So, um, that's just making this tedious, but we'll get it done and uh, we'll have an oil cooler installed. So, all right. Well, let me get out of your, you two, uh, your way there. Continue your cursing and flashlight mouth holding. So, All right. <laughs> thank you. And now for something completely different. So as you can see, the weather's a little overcast out here, um, but we did have a few folks from the Texas North Texas Corvair Association. Association, the NTCA. They braved it and came out and brought a couple of their uh, fine anti uh, videos, and. Uh, what was your name, sir? John Martin. John Martin. And you own this beautiful, what, what color is this, taupe? This is a silver blue. Silver blue, excuse right. me. Right, 1964 Corvair Monza. Okay. So, Al, how long have you owned this car? Uh, let's see, since 1982. Actually, my parents owned the car before us. Okay. And it's been in the club since uh, probably about 1976. Oh wow! Or thereabouts. So, and did they a while. were they the original owners? No, they were uh, second or third owners of the vehicle. And actually, my son drove it two years to high school. Okay. And so, anything neat? I, now, I I never really got around to seeing many Corvairs. So, what's special about these? I'm going to have an ignorant moment, but I'm pretty sure these have engines in the back. That's right. You're exactly okay. correct. Okay. We're going to. Uh, horizontally opposed six cylinder. Oh, this wow. one has factory air on it. Factory air, yeah. I saw the sticker in the back, it said air conditioning. Right. You know, like, I guess back in the day, that was a uh, pretty that was high a end deal. That was high end back then. Yep, so less than three percent came with factory air. Less than three percent came with factory air. That is pretty neat. So and this uh, Monza had a lot of features on it, like bucket seats. This one has an automatic transmission, two-speed power oh, wow. glide, and uh, also one of the option or one of the features of it is a fold-down rear seat. Wow! So you could have uh, additional package space besides. Uh, uh, room in the trunk, so it's not real large, but uh, right. just to get extra carrying capacity. A little extra grocery shopping. Right. Mm. We can take a look at the uh, trunk. Alright. We'll check out the trunk and then we'll check out the other vehicle. I, I don't want it to start raining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty neat. I mean, you do get, yeah, you can fit a tire in there, some tools. Right. And uh, what is, what is that? It's the uh, windshield washer. Oh, okay. Fluid. 
it's like in vintage GM. Right. That's pretty cool. There's the uh, reservoir back there. Okay. Well, cool. Normally and they had the spare tire back by the engine, but with the factory air, they, they moved the spare tire up in the trunk area. Well, cool. And uh, I'm horrible with names. Did you say it was Rich? Or what was your name? John. John, John, sorry. All right, well, thank you, John. I sure appreciate right. it. I'm going to check out the uh, the other vehicles before it starts raining. Okay, very good. Thanks, John. You bet. So I'm going to show my ignorance some more. Being an elder millennial, I've never actually seen... What, what are these called? Cor Corvans? Or? Cor it's a Corvair, but it's a Series 95. Series 95. This one is a Greenbrier Deluxe. Greenbrier Deluxe. And... It had a lot of features that most of them didn't have. Most of them were basically trucks. Okay. The like, Greenbriars like are... Like that one over there, right? Uh, that's a pickup. Okay. Uh, that's also a Series 95, or a lot of times they're called forward controls because you're sitting in front of the, okay. the wheel. Kind of like uh, I, I drove in, uh, what was it, I rode in uh, Hemet's in the Army. They, they had the, the engines... You sat above the engine or above, uh, right. over it, so kind of the same right. concept. The, uh, Switzerland, maybe? Is that where? Where's that one from? The which one? The the one you just mentioned. I, you know, I don't remember. It, it's a European military vehicle. Though. I'd have to. That'd have to be a separate Google search. Yeah, um, yeah. It, <laughs> they were very similar in mm -hmm. configuration because they had. A similar size engine, but theirs was in the front, okay, instead of in the back. All right. And these have the rear engine, just like the Corvair, okay. But they are a 95-inch wheelbase, whereas the car is a 108-inch wheelbase. Okay. So they're actually shorter wheelbase. I believe a Corvette is 96, so they're a shorter wheelbase than a Corvette. Okay. Is that why the 95 is in the name? The 95 is in the name because of the wheelbase. Oh, okay, that makes more sense now. And they, uh, of course the vans are top heavy, but they corner pretty good with some modifications. And they, uh, I've added fuel injection and several engine modifications. It runs good. I'm ready now to start thinking about improving the appearance of it ah. inside and out. Well, cool. Why don't we uh, take a quick look around here, and then we can go check out the pickup real quick. And what was your name again, sir? I'm Ron Hilliard. Ron Hilliard, and you're also with the North Texas Corvair Association, Association. right? Okay. And pretty neat. This one's a four-speed, four which speed. was not common, and it had dealer-installed air conditioning. Oh wow! So it didn't come from the factory. Did not air none so of the these, dealer had to put it in. No FCs came with factory air. Is that what's over here on the side? Yes. Okay. And in the back, hanging from the ceiling. Oh wow! <laughs> Four on the floor, as they say, right? Yep. All right. Well, thanks, Ron. And these, the engine's a little harder to get out. Oh, that's right. There. The engine's back here. But they have a little door that stuck. The distributor was here, so you could change your points or adjust your timing. And you can check your oil. Whereas the cars, uh, you're going at it from the top, so they didn't have this. Well, thanks, Ron. You're welcome. Like I said, I'm going to go check out and the pickup before the, the pickup rain. pickup looks good, yes. Yeah, before the rain kicks up. So now we're over here to look at the pickup. We have Robert. I actually asked his name and made sure I didn't get it wrong this time. So, Robert, you're also with the uh, North Texas Corvair Association? Association? That's true. Awesome. All right, the NTCA. I'll have it memorized by the time <laughs> I'm done with this interview. So, Robert, you have the pickup version of what I just looked at. And yeah. that's in pretty cool shape here. Is this original paint or? No, this is, uh, it's been restored. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a kind of a satin red that I put on it. The pickup was originally red. Okay. 
but it's been fully restored. It's a 61 model and it's called a ramp side pickup. Ramp side. Oh. It's got a ramp on the side over here that will lay down. Okay, that's pretty neat. They uh, used them a lot. Telephone companies and airports and places like that used them a lot. But it was only made for about three or four years. This is 61. Okay. Uses the same engine and uh, transmission as the car does. This one has a 110 with a power glide automatic in it. Some of them had three speed manuals. Okay. Now access the engine. In the rear, air cooled just like all of them. So it looks very familiar. This has a 110 in it. They originally came out with a with 80 horsepower. And this one's been updated with a 110. It's a, a car engine, but other than that, they're exactly the same. Okay. Do you get that same kind of little back panel axis, or it's only yes, from right here? Yes, I do. Okay. Just like the van. That's just right here. See, I just feel like they don't make vehicles as functional like they used to. Well, this is this is a the only air cooled. Uh, rear engine car that America ever made. I guess Tucker made one back years ago, but the, the only production car that America's made that's air-cooled rear engine. Now, did you get air conditioning installed in this one? No, this one doesn't have it. Okay. None of them did. It can be done, but... It's just a little warm in the uh, in the summer. Is all, huh? Wow, this looks nice. Did you do all this work, or...? I did. Oh, great work, sir. You got a little, what is it, the CB, this, CB radio in there? Mm-hmm, I do. Nice. This sat for about 35 years under a carport, and so I had some rust in it to take out. Right. They're fun to drive. They're really quiet. They're really comfortable. They ride really nice. Well, awesome. Well, at... I think that's uh, the rain's about to move in, so I don't want to be filming us while we're getting rained on. I want to thank you for your time and uh, show me your awesome work here. You did a great job. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey guys, how's it going? Rainy, rainy, rainy day, but um, both days. So real rainy and cold weekend, but we got uh, the crew got a ton of stuff done. So let me go through. Uh, you saw that Mike and uh, Mike had gotten the door sill out. We got the um, found the we wanted to do clean a little bit of corrosion up so we could put the floors down we did not get the floors down because when we uh, took the door sill off it was rotted so those parts have all been removed the rotted parts came off when we took the rotted parts off Mike found out that the uh, sills rivets along the bottom there those were all look like it was installed by somebody who was somewhat blind um, they're absolutely rubbish uh, they used the wrong rivet gun they used the wrong it was just workmanship was absolutely hard so Joey drilled all those rivets out shot them properly and it looks like a million bucks in there now so that's greatness right there um, well there's stuff going on in the uh, after fuselage area and all that um, Gary and uh, trying to think Gary and uh, Dr. Bill working on fuel tank stuff getting the fuel tanks prepped out uh, found a problem with one of the fuel tanks we're gonna probably have to have some welding done on it it's a mismachining thing just a thing. Um, anyway, that's that's that. We have the. Um, anyway, that's going on. We have. Uh, we're working on that. So we're working on getting the rear tank set up. Uh, in the oil system, the oil system is complete except for the pre-oil um, plumbing. So we need a pre-oil pump, filter, and some other stuff. And then that thing is ready to go. We're hoping to have that installed next episode. So we'll see how that goes. If that's the case, we get once we get the pre-oil system in, the engine oil system is complete, ready for flight, which is huge. Mike, Big Mike has already laid wiring into it to uh, add, energize that stuff. So that's greatness. Uh, so that's going on. We've got to develop the bracketry for the wheel well light. Um, that's just a thing. Shouldn't be that big a deal. Dallas has been working like a like a crazy man on the engine. Um, he's got the uh, pre-oil stuff hooked up. Basically, engine number one, firewall forward, 
is uh, short of a few little things is installation complete. We've got to hook up the governor, then installation is complete. Um, after that, we've got to do some controls rigging and then firewall forward. This thing's pretty well ready for flight. He's got, I think, one vent tube and propeller governor cabling. That's it. So uh, Dallas is working on that. Ashland was also working on that with him, uh, getting everything sorted to that end. So that's good. Um, Caitlin came in here and got the pre all uh, the strainer cap with the pre all fittings and all that uh, installed. So she got that done. Richard and Jim were working on the engine. They got the exhaust muffs on this engine that were a little bit of a pickle. They got those sorted and those are installed. The blast tube uh, tubing is installed. And now we've got some scat tubing that we've got to install. Uh, we've also got some big scat tubing for the carburetor heat um, tubes. That's inbound. Uh, we should have that this week. So that's come along. Uh, that's great. Uh, pretty soon we've got to make a sheet metal bracket and then this carburetor can go on. So that's absolute greatness there. Sebastian has done a fabulous job. The fuel system, all of the rubber hoses, the, the old rubber hoses are 100% complete. All new rubber, complete. So all the old rotten hoses on this aircraft, when months ago when we started looking at this thing, we just scared the hell out of us. They are complete. The team has done a fabulous job. And uh, between uh, Gary and Richard and Sebastian and, and Darren and everybody else that's worked on this thing, it's freaking complete. So it's awesome. Uh, cabin wise, Big Mike has been working on the avionics. He has all of the roof antenna wiring labeled. Um, he, he pulled a lot of it back, labeled it, did final routing on it, got it up in the forward bilge, got that sorted. So that is looking like a million bucks. He's also got the pre-oil wiring home runs uh, knocked out. Those are in place. Did a bunch of housekeeping up in the nose to get that sorted. So that's done. Um, we've got the master cylinders. I finally figured out the secret sauce in getting the master cylinders dis disassembled. Next episode, we're going to have the master cylinders ready to go back in. Once those go back in, we can bleed brakes. Once we bleed brakes, the brakes will be done for airworthies, which is huge. Um, landing gear doors, I've got those at the shop. We're going to hopefully work on those. They need to be stripped, painted, and then uh, installed. Once we get the main gear doors and the tail gear door in rig, the landing gear system is complete, ready for flight. So just a lot of stuff, a lot of little stuff still, but we're, we're, nick, we're, we're just uh, doing a kind of nickel and dime and, and eating the elephant one bite at a time. But the, uh, the team is doing a huge amount of work. I'm trying to think who, oh, Miriam and Sarah, they cleaned up the, uh, the baggage bin, the rear baggage bin. There's a closeout panel that goes in the back of the, in that area. It looked like somebody had driven a truck over it. They've got all the fasteners out of that. We're gonna replicate that out of a little heavier gauge metal and that will be set up and sorted out. So that'll look nice. So they've got that set up so we can make a pattern out of that. Uh, Mike, um, uh, Mike, our Tulsa Mike, uh, not from Tulsa. He is working on the seats. Where'd they go? Oh, uh, well, he's got them all working. Um, Tom, um, our upholstery guy is, uh, Tom Mack is working. He's got the pilot co-pilot seats prototyped. He's getting ready to start doing fabric on those, which is great. They're gonna, I think when you see them, you're gonna love them. Um, and then he's got two of the rear passenger seats. Um, and Mike is working on the other three. So we're gonna, we're gonna start getting this thing going. Um, it's, it's starting to click together. It's kind of cool. Oh, Gary fixed some, uh, he put all the trim panels back on the elevator, getting those all sorted. Um, so the elevator system trim is loosened up. We feel real good about that. So that's good. So it's coming along. It's coming along real good. So anyway, that's it. <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, I'm, we're kind of whipped. This was a real hard weekend. Um, just lots of stuff done. And again, the crew did a fabulous job. And oh, I know what else we did. Uh, Crew got the uh, lower area painted here. If you remember, there's paper on this for quite a while. So we've got a bunch of area. We're gonna have, you're gonna see, start seeing some newer vendors up in the uh, area here. So that's gonna be coming along. Um, but anyway, this lower area is done. And now uh, we also got the spots up in the nose. We got those, in fact, I'll go back up there and show them to you. Um, they were uh, just some filler and whatnot, but we've got those tan. They're tan. Uh, next up up there will be the uh, stripes. We'll start uh, taping those off with stripes and get that sorted. So we got a couple over here. That's where the old fuel tank, when there was a fuel tank in the nose, the vents were. So we 
made those go away. There was some avionics vent stuff. We got rid of that stuff because it wasn't ne needed. So you're going to start seeing the nose looking quite pretty. So anyway, Gerald, you promised you're going to come up here and tape our nose for us and so we can make it look beautiful. So that's what's going on. Um, the channel is Hangar Rats. The project, Hollywood Bomber here at the Vintage Flying Museum in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, my name is Bill. And again, on, on behalf of the whole crew, thanks for watching. Follow along and um, this plane will fly. Air Venture 24, failure is not an option.